gone. Holy buckets! Just like out of the gate. I'm really falling in love with just the flexibility of that material. Huh. Hi, Zach. Hi, nice, man. <laughs> All right, you guys, we are going to have fun, fun, fun. We are going to transform this kitchen over the next few days and try to do something that I've never touched on before. You guys, if you're new to my channel, my name is Stan the Dirt Monkey, and I have a lot of fun playing with heavy equipment and doing stuff, but nothing like what we're going to attempt today, and I'm going to try to do it with my wife. And her and I work together like oil and water. <laughs> Remember the time we tried to carry a couch together? You broke my towel. Yeah, yeah, we're very coordinated together. <laughs> <laughs> if you're coming from <laughs> Mike from Stone Cold Countertops channel, welcome aboard. Uh, Nick and I are going to be attempting for the very first time to work with epoxy resin. Um, if you're a regular viewer to my channel, just stick with us because we're going to be having a lot of fun. We're going to be doing something that has been an obsession of mine for a while now. And there's my kid just in the background. Hey, <laughs> making the dog, making Lucy holler. This is the jungle girl. She's coming to live. She brought Tarzan, her boyfriend. So <laughs> Thomas, the Tarzan, they're visiting. They just came in last night. So yeah. welcome to them. Welcome to all of you guys. We're in for an amazing process. What was it like to work with this stuff for the first time? Interesting. I was scared. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was easy to work with though. Um, I'll say that it, the turnout was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Really? Oh yeah. Okay. And if you guys want to see how we did this, just stay tuned because we're going to show you. But if you really want to know a very detailed description on exactly how to do this and to do it way better than we did it, go over to Mike's <laughs> channel at Stone Coat Countertops. Yeah. He sent me pictures of what he did. Oh, it helped. <laughs> No, dude, he sent me pictures of what he did. Yeah, oh, oh after, so we, after, well, he did. He so had we, instructions. Yeah, so we're doing <laughs> a collaboration you. with him. And what I did is I we obsessed. I would watch his channel here, mm -hmm. right here, mm -hmm. every for, for weeks on end, we would just go, what, what video of bikes are we going to watch tonight? And we would watch hours and hours just trying to get it all in. And he did a master class of what you and I did, and it turned out way better than what we did. In fact, I'm a little jealous. Oh. I'm actually a lot jealous. Oh. It's nice. I mean, we tried. <laughs> I like it. I look at what they, so he, he used the exact same materials we used, everything, but he just has years of experience on it. So you're going to get to see the amateur version. And then if you so want to see the see. real version, go over to Mike's channel, Stone Coat Countertops, and check it out. And uh, yeah. that's all we got for you this one. Let's just jump, dive right into this one. Huh? What do you think? I'll do it. All right. The first thing we've got to do is clear and prep. We're going over basically plywood countertops, but we've got to get these ready. And so we're just going to prep the entire area because we're going to be making a mess, I guess. Ready to get her moist. 
because that's going to make the bondo stick better in my patch holes and while the bond is drying. Take the coat ready. No. All right, <clears throat> my question to you guys is, do you want to do something fun? Um, I'm going to be finishing this black walnut countertop in a different video, but do you guys want to see this thing revealed? If you want to see this thing revealed, just like a sneak peek, say, show me the wood, Stan, show me the wood. Comment down below, and what I'll do is I'll just do a quick reveal video, and then we'll go through the process of how we're actually going to finish this. So let me know if you want to see my wood. As long as you thoroughly mix the hardener. Oh God, I hate touching this stuff. It will harden the clay. But what I mean is the more hardener you mix, the faster it'll harden it. The less you mix, it'll still harden it. it gives you a little more working time. Okay. All right, Play-Doh. Oh yeah. Play-Doh. Booyah. 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 I love Play-Doh. Play-Doh doesn't smell this good, kids. Oof. Actually, it doesn't smell. I lost it. I just went to switch the cameras. And when I came back, within a moment or two, it's gone. Too much hardener, too fast. I didn't give myself enough working time, but that just means that bad boy will be ready really fast. All right, let's mix up a new batch. We don't have a whole lot, so let's be more cautious. So the material you see us using here is nothing more than carbondo. And the idea behind it is, is everywhere we've screwed the countertop down, I want to fill those holes in so that my top of my countertop as I pour it comes out perfectly level. I don't want any imperfections in the base. This is the first step toward the base prep is to make sure all my holes are filled. Now this is no secret ingredient either. It's just straight black paint. I want to lay down a coat of black underneath so that if any of the coloring doesn't fully cover this countertop, I want black underneath to be the reveal color. And so I'm just putting it on with a trowel simply because I had a trowel handy and I didn't have a paintbrush handy, but this is nothing more than just regular black paint. All right, we set the timer for four minutes. So in 22 seconds, this will be done. And then what we're gonna do is initial light pour just to prime the countertops. So this is just a, a primer coat. Nothing more than just to get the main stuff to stick. Stick and flow. Now everything that I'm covering in this video, I learned just by going to the Stone Cold Countertops website and YouTube channel. Everything that you see here is readily available. If you guys are going to be taking on a project like this on your own, the information is out there and I got it all directly right from the source, Stone Cold Countertops.
Stone Cold Countertops uses a two-part epoxy resin pour. You mix equal parts of part A with part B. It's a very straightforward, easy to use formula. And what you see us doing here is what we call a dirty pour. We get the base color down and then we mix all of the colors that we want to combine together in one pail and just pour it out and trowel it out. It's a very straightforward pour. The second part of the countertop we're going to do in a completely different fashion. Though. Okay, so this is going to be our dirty pour final coat on this and hopefully we got enough to make it last throughout the other side and this does not get mixed this just gets poured but then we can use the heat gun to blow it and move it so that we can get it so it flows exactly where we want it to go. You can't, you can't do it wrong. Wow, that is gorgeous. Holy buckets. Just like out of the gate. That's amazing. Holy crap. Should I add more? We don't have a lot more left. we we'll let it spread. Go to the other side, I think. I don't know, you think I should drip anything in that, you know, because that, but all them bubbles coming out, it is kind of going down a little bit, I mean. Tip the bucket upside down over there. Slitter tip. Yeah, just, just set it down. I just set it and forget it. And so this is where you get to start messing with your color, your palettes, right? So what this is, is actually alcohol that I'm dripping onto the two-part epoxy resin. And that creates a spackling and a break in the finish. Now I have colored that alcohol on top of it and that creates the unique fracture lines that a lot of times you'll see in real granite countertops. Sink's gonna cover up the edge pretty well. You're going to probably get as close as you can in here because it's not going to cover much more than that little piece. That's fine. we got to pull the tape off as soon as this starts to dry. We pull the tape off on the sides and we can drag it right over. No, I'm just, I'm, this is helping pop bubbles, but it's also going to move the colors around. Okay, well, I've made three screw ups so far. First screw up is I dropped this camera directly onto the countertop, kerplunk. Second screw up is 
you can see I've got a little bit of bleed on the back side. That's where the tape released. And then the material bled up. Not the end of the world, but something that I've got to now take corrective action on. And then the third screw up is I had the temperature of the house set to 60 degrees. And it specifically calls out 65 to 80. So now I have extended work time, which I hope doesn't change the end results. So while this is drying, I'm really falling in love with just the flexibility of that material for the countertops. So I've got a question for the experts at Stone Cold Countertops. I want to do a floor, but I want to do a bathroom floor. So I've got this bathroom we call the cave. And it's built to look like a cave, but the floor just does not go. It's concrete underneath. Can I use stone coat in a situation like this, or do you recommend against it? Let me know. All right, guys, so the plan is to see what they say, go check out their channel. But in the meantime, I'm going to get this ready because we're going to do one final pour and then a grand reveal. All right, you guys, let's check out the finalized product. I got the kitchen put uh, tentatively back together, but check out these countertops. They just pop. Now this side we did by hand. That side down there, we did a dirty pour on. I'll talk about the difference right here. So this side, every little line, we just added in the details and the characters. It took a lot longer to do, but we, it was a fun process. It really was a lot of fun to work with this material. Like all of this, we were able to just add right in ourselves. Again, we just kind of started to run out of color, so we just started to have fun and just experiment. One of the things I really like is I just took a dribble of green and I just dribbled it in here and it just cracked apart the colors below it and it made it look like they were exploding and kind of just revealing something underneath. I really dig that look. It's just kind of wild and crazy to think that this is not done by mother nature. It looks like an agate exploded and barfed all over my countertop or a 1970s bicycle helmet decided to implode into my kitchen. Now this is the dirty pour. We just put all the chemicals together in one big bucket and just let her go and just dumped it out. At first I liked this side more than the other side, but after a while I think I like the other side better. What side do you guys like better? You like the dirty pour? Again, all the chemicals, they weren't mixed. They were just, all the colors were poured into one bucket. And then that bucket just poured and allowed to flow out. And there's a little bit of detail work done here. Just a little bit. We fractured in the corner right here to get that, to that look. Or do you like the, like it where we just started to do it by hand, just to conserve materials. We just didn't have enough material to do a dirty pour with. Personally, I like that side in the beginning more, but then after about three hours of working this, I fell in love with this side. I love what we were able to just create with just the paint. So that's our experience with that one. Hope you guys had a fun ride today. It was a fun project to do. It really was. God bless you guys. Go get them. Hey, let me know what project you guys are working on in the off season. I want to know if you guys are tackling something that isn't really quite in your wheelhouse. I mean, that's what we've been doing here and having a lot of fun doing it. It's fun just to, to go outside of our comfort zones. <laughs> Hi, Zach. Hi, <Hey>, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> All sorts of fun activities going on. Oh, fresh air. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that's going to call it for this one. Now, if you want a very thorough breakdown on how we actually ended up building that countertop, I'm going to suggest you go over to uh, Mike's channel, Stone Coat Countertops. He's got it all laid out exactly how you do these things. This was my very first attempt at ever trying to do anything like this. I have worked with other epoxy resins. In fact, the countertops I have here, we poured. This one we poured. All of these we poured. And I've used epoxy resin in the past. And I've never had an epoxy resin that worked as well as this stuff works. It's phenomenal. And I actually gained enough confidence in the process that I'm now going to be doing more of it because it's such a cheap alternative. 
And it's just fun. I mean, you don't have to be afraid of screwing up because if you screw up, worst case scenario, you can just pour the whole thing over. And in fact, in the very next video coming down the pipeline, I screw up my massive black walnut center island piece. I totally screw it up. In the very next video, you're going to see me do that. I'm not going to hide it from you because I think there's a lot to be gained from learning from your mistakes and especially from learning from somebody else's mistakes instead of making them on your own. And so I'm gonna show you the mistake I make and then we're gonna wrap up this three-part series with me fixing that mistake. And to fix it turned out to be so much easier than I could have ever imagined it happening. It took me an afternoon. I totally destroyed what I did and it took me an afternoon to fix it and put it back the right way. So. Uh, look for that coming out and then we've got a lot of snow plowing coming out. We've got multi-force uh, coming out. We just tested out the brand new snow raider. It's called the mag. This thing is a monster. That's going to be coming out. Um, we've got uh, action from the world of concrete. So you, you can look for that. Also the MEI, the power sports show. Uh, that one is coming up down the pipeline as well. So, so much stuff going on. I can't even begin to imagine, but I, one thing I can begin to imagine is how grateful I am to have you guys with. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for hitting that subscribe button and thank you for being a part of my video process. It makes the day go much easier. In fact, you let some of you guys ask me and look, look at me, I'm rambling now, but how do you answer so many comments? I get that question asked more than once. And the fact of the matter is, I just enjoy talking to you guys. I spend hours just talking to you guys because I like it. Thank you. So thank you. It's fun. You guys make it fun. You guys are the reason I do it. And hopefully you guys enjoy the process. And I hope you guys also enjoy the fact that I am 100% willing to share every mistake I make. I'm not going to hide it. I'm not going to push it under and I see other YouTubers, they try to look perfect. I don't understand why, because we're all just people, but I'm not trying to look perfect. This is the way I operate. And when I screw it up, I'm going to share it with you guys. And I hope you guys just appreciate it. That's it. God bless you guys. Go get it. And we'll catch you guys on another one.